All right. And uh, yeah, this is humankind. We have been stretching our legs on our very private island here where no one else except for this um, free people, free city exists. They're being influenced by someone else we haven't met yet. Uh, but they're not never they're never going to be more attractive than us. We are the most attractive people So we're just uh, Still waiting around exploring stuff building our stuff up over here. We have this army. Okay, so how do, how does this work? How do I, I Mean you mercenaries. How do I mercenary you? How do I buy you? Okay, we could buy Resources from them. That's okay. <laughs> I would like to hire your troops, can't I? Doesn't look like I can. It's odd. Very odd. I don't know how to do it. Not yet, anyway. Maybe it will reveal itself at some later point. Or it's a question of uh, influence. Okay, they won't attack us. Ah, okay, we need to reach this bit here, and then we can go ahead and hire them. I see. So we have a room for two cities right now. Uh, we so far have only one. And I feel like I would like to build a city down here, where the cool wonder is. Let's go ahead. How much is it? 143. So we'll just wait another turn. Debate and discuss. Oops. Now, things that one generation learned can be passed to the next. Oops. Via something more reliable than campfire stories. Okay, so we've discovered something new and we're keeping unlocking these stars. Which we will need eventually. And... Well, I think we can forego the three food and instead get the 10 production there. So this will be our second city, I think. This lair here we could raid. Should we? Yeah, let's do it. Just, just so you see. That, that is the thing. The growing faithful. The Empire's religion grows. More and more followers coming into the faith every day. Some practices their beliefs through ceremonies led by priests while others guide their own worship. It is time to give blessing to one of these means. So, either they have religious district industry costs. Yeah, that's... The act of worship is a sacred act between a believer and a higher power. That is something I believe in anyway. So we don't have the influence points right now to do that. So we shall wait until we have. And for the moment, we'll select something new here. Uh, we're going to go with carpentry because it unlocks for us the option to uh, take down forests, which in turn should help with production. I've never done that, actually. Let's first ransack this lair here. And this is also a little bit hidden and will take one turn and yield us 22 gold once it is done. Ransack successful. We acknowledge this. Carpentry researched. So now these guys have this option here, clear forest. So we're going to send them out over here, far to the side. And we're going to tell them to clear this forest. And that should give production to over here provides 20 production to Phoenicia so Phoenicia should get plus 20 production while these guys clear that forest for six turns I'm not sure if they get it at the end or throughout <laughs> I I am not too certain but we're gonna do this also going to keep an eye on this, not because we want to hire the troops, but because we want to assimilate them at some point. Uh, we do have enough civics now. 
to do this thing. So we want personal rights. Yes. Okay. Uh, next up, what do we have? Allows population to be consumed in order to do something. Now we don't really care for that. Bronze working. We don't actually own a territory with bronze in it right now, so it's uh, it's not super interesting. Let's go with the whole flood irrigation thing. That's kind of fitting more the theme of the Harapans. And we could send these guys over. Wow. Okay, that's that's some some way. Uh, we're gonna send them here and establish an outpost there in this area, so we get the. Upper. Not that the free people are going to take it away from us, but we can still just take it, take it for us. And there's no question about anything at all ever. I might actually also do that over here. Get the ebony and the coffee and everything. These are already paying off, as you can see, in gold. My god, good stuff. I'm loath to spend this because we needed to make more cities. Okay, for now, where would the best spot be? Up there, you say? 15 food and five. Yeah, 12 and 21 is definitely better. You're right, game, you're right. Sometimes it doesn't give you that uh, solution or this suggestion. I really don't know what it relies on. Oh, we have a little thing. The pecking of poultry. The art of divination spreads across the empire. Priests search for messages from the gods and animal entrails, the flights of birds, the wheeling of the stars, in holy de uh, decoctions and elsewhere. Now, however, the practices have become so commonplace, so bizarre, that the whole empire is sliding towards chaotic superstition. Even the eating patterns of chickens are being interpreted by military commanders. What to do? Well, we could embrace it. I don't know, just kind of go full ham and everyone would just be celebrating giving us some um some uh, stability which we don't need right now we could forbid it because that's just foolishness or we could experiment with it giving us some extra science for 15 turns which i think is kind of cool so i'm gonna try and figure this out I also like this little when there's something new added, the little effect that it gives. It's very cute. Let's do it, boys. Regulus. All right. So I think it's time I show you the attach thing. So we have this territory over here, right? And we have this we have this city here. We can attach this territory to this city. That means that this is not going to evolve into a city, but all the territories that are available to this territory become available to this city. So if I click this now, this is going to take away stability, but it's going to give us more of all this up here. We might even get more population. Uh, let's see, this city right now here has... How much population do you have? Do you even tell us? You have four out of four. So we should get four extra population if we attach this. Let's see. We have right now four out of eight. And now we're at eight out of 12. So the territory allows more people to live here. And we can directly start uh, building on these areas here to harvest them. So we're going to start harvesting the horses. And we're going to start harvesting the dye here. Because that's all pretty darn cool to have, I think. So that's how we create a bigger district. And now this has a dashed border inside, but the outside border is all thick. So if you don't have open borders with someone, they are not allowed to move through here. I'm not entirely sure if they're allowed to move through the dashed borders. But definitely not through the closed. I think they allowed to move through the dash borders, but the closed borders are closed. As the name would suggest. One thing I don't enjoy too much is how quickly you lose the terrain. 
and it goes into the stylized view. Um, the, I like the stylized view, but I wish I could watch the game from up here, but still see the very, very beautiful tile set that is in use here. As I said, it's not all perfect, but all things considered, it's also absolutely not terrible. So these guys, what are we going to do with these guys? They're going to go more out to explore. Oh yeah. So here we're just going to wait until we have enough to build the city out of it. Ah, we could now buy them. But these are defending, so we can't hire them specifically, but we could hire them. And they would be rented for 30 turns. Does it cost me anything? No, they... Yeah, well, they cost two upkeep. Oh, cool. Let's, let's use them. They can also auto-explore. Why not? And we're almost close to starting on the assimilation thing, but that costs a whole lot of influence. So that's fine. I mean, there's no threat to us here, really. So we don't necessarily need them, but I think it's still good fun to have them. Uh, let's spend some influence to get the horses down here. I think. Irrigation is done. Others will be after your boot designs and blister medicines. Okay, we have mapped the continent that we're in, which is called Cassiopeia. So we have seen all of our continent, which is literally ours. Which is pretty darn cool. <laughs> uh, and it gave us some bonus boost stuff here, I think. The what are you guys doing? You're kind of, you don't know what to do, right? Uh, you're kind of sitting around. No, you, you're done chopping down wood there. Blades of the Empire. As our horizons widen, your armies grow in lockstep with our ambitions. Now, with military power spread over several regiments, it is time to decide the nature of our soldiers who composes our armies. So we can have conscripts, reducing the industry cost for building them. Or we can have professional soldiers taking longer to recruit, but being stronger overall. Personally, I'm a big fan for for both options, <laughs> but we neither need them nor do we really have the option right now. So we'll just keep it as it is and not do anything much there. This costs 240 to turn into a city and this also. So I think this is going to be our next city. Uh, so we need to save up some. Let's see. Let's get a wheel going. So roads start forming and our people can move a little bit quicker throughout the land. We are almost done with our farm here. This one. Which is good just in time. Because we have no surplus anymore to work on. And that's also dangerous because it slows down our population growth. Actually, it slows it down to zero. Unless there is surplus, there's not going to be more people. So we need this. And now we have another 13 surplus. This will work through what we started earlier on. So first we go for horse. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about this here. We have the agrarian affinity. Every culture has one of some. Uh, so agrarian empires receive more fame when earning agrarian era stars. So right now we have 24 out of 36 people. Uh, and if we click this, we can attract one population from each adjacent territory, city or outpost. 
Uh, this will create a grievance, which is something they can use to start a war against us. Uh, we get a 7 stability bonus if we get a person. So we're not going to use it, but it's like an extra superpower you can use from time to time to help yourself along with what your culture is good at. Oh yeah, a new wonder can be claimed. Um, this is a very nice thing. These these games usually have wonders and this is no exception. So like it is in other games in Civilization, for example, you just start on a wonder and the first person to finish it gets it and everyone else who has maybe also started on it uh, is kind of lost in the dust and fails and well, that's just how it is. Uh, but here you can spend influence or everyone can spend influence and claim one and be like yeah that's mine and you're the only one who's allowed to build it uh, but you must build it before you claim another one and i see stonehenge here looks really good because it gives plus 10 pood per core religionist state i think that means per state that has our core religion i'm not entirely sure what core religionist means but i think that is what it means uh it gives on the capital plus five percent food uh, for any empire that has the same religion and plus five stability for the capital of all following. Uh, it It is considered a holy site. It can be only built once. Okay, very good. So we're going to claim this. We're not going to build it, we just claim it. So no one else gets to build it either until we are well and ready to do it. The wheel has been researched. Very good. Getting forward on all the things. Now we can go for bronze working. I think. Where are we in terms of troops? Yeah, we could have scout horses, which we don't really need. Uh, we could have chariots, which we can't because we don't really have the copper yet, but that's okay. We could add as a moment's notice. Get that. So we'll wait right now until we can turn this into a city. Let's see. Terror of the bovines. <laughs> that is a cow in a headlock. With someone yelling at it. That is very unfriendly. The empire is mired in tradition and beholden to the past, but no city is more unenlightened than the metropolis of Harappa. In this superstitious place where the hear, uh, hearsay and myths run wild, farmyard animals are now being put on trial for crimes after a herd of cattle were sentenced to be burned on a pyre for conspiring against the empire. One wealthy landowner has had enough. Now he petitions us to intervene. What is our stance on the judgment? So we're like, yeah, that's all fine. Um, we are like, now come on dude let's let's not or we can be like we're gonna stop with these customs full stop we're just gonna stop i would like to go with overturning so we're gonna go with overturning why um because we are almost at the end of what we can research in this era and we're kind of still far away from reaching the next era so right now it doesn't really help us getting a, a research boost all that much. We are better off with having more growth, more people coming in. Yep, bronze working is done, very good. Again, we're waiting to create another city there. Build an arbor. All right, our population gain is going. We can also look at this here and basically see. So getting population is our primary thing because we are an agrarian culture. Other cultures have a, a different primary thing which they could earn. We are good on science. We are not very good on trade. Uh, we are not very good on military because we haven't done anything there. We're not really good at aesthetic uh, because we're not really producing all that much influence. We haven't done a lot of territory claiming right now. So this is our best bet uh, next to research in this here. We only need two more. So it's probably going to be 
between research and population for us. And we're almost there. We can turn this into a city now. And this is now Mohenyo Daro. And... No. We should get this. Plus five. Yeah. Lake Hillier. Plus five influence. So we want this here to be city growth as well. That's really simple. That's what we're good at. We want city growth. Um, we have a population loss in Chasson, which is over here, uh, because they're overpopulated, honestly. Uh, I don't think we can really do anything with this. What we could do is we could attach if we had enough uh, points. It's kind of terrible that people are dying, but it doesn't seem to mean all that much either. So, Land of the dead. For hundreds of years, the dead of Harappa have been laid to rest in burial sites within or close to the city's borders. Now, however, with the fast rising population and many dying every moon, these sites are becoming overcrowded. Future burials could lead to disease as corpses await processing. Cremation might be a wiser choice. What is your decree? We could bury them, which will cost us some stability. Uh, we could cremate them, which gives us some food and plus 20% on land unit industry cost and naval unit cost. That's terrible. So the soldiers would need to do it. Uh, or we could make it a privilege. So the religious elite will still be buried, but the masses must be cremated. Yeah. Sounds okay. That uh, might not be okay. Just just so we're clear, it might be a terrible decision. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Eventually. Okay, so this city asks us to do something. It asks us what should it do? What should I build, master? It asks. And we are like I don't know. Um I think. We'll build this right here. Because in this city, it's not going to have a better spot. And it gets some food after. <laughs> oh, we could put this here. That's fine. Alright, so something that's really cool is these shared projects. Um, you can build something like a wonder or a religious place. And you can have multiple cities or all your cities work on it together. So it goes quicker. I really love that. That is one of the most fantastic things in this game. Okay, we have discovered fishing. That's what is left. Reinforcements are pretty cool. Sailing. We should definitely go for sailing so we can go uh, explore abroad. With the Empire thriving, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces catching our eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, we play the game under instruction. The game is reckoned to be a form of divination. Okay, so do we hear the divine stuff? Do we silence it? Or do we overlook it? Uh... I feel like we're fairly religious. We're gonna we're gonna listen to that stuff. That's that's creepy. If the game is telling us the world is ending, we better listen. Okay, new population gain. Let's see, oh, we can our we can set our first tenant, and I'm pretty sure what's gonna be. Uh, we have 28 adherents, so I think we're gonna go for purge idleness. Uh, indulgence only begets indolence. A true believer rests not knowing their holy work is never done. So we get plus two on coastal water and plus two on lake. That's not super ideal, but I think that fits us well. So this is how it is. There are several levels, so we get to pick four tenants overall as we gain more followers to our religion. Pretty much. So again, it's not 
super good, but it's also not terrible because uh, having all these food resources just kind of explode uh, what we can have in, in a city like this. So, yeah, it's it's a mixed bag. There's better, there's worse. It's okay. It fits. I like it in terms of roleplay. So, deal with it. Uh, right, we're almost done here with the artisan quarters. Revenue civic. Capitalist empire's true seat of power, but now other cities with energetic populaces rise to prominence. Their leaders and other influential figures want to sway over empire's affairs, and the questions of who wields power must be answered. So who leads? The Autark? Or a small council? I like another city cap, but we don't have enough influence to do either, so it'll have to stay as it is. Uh, it does give a little number down here telling you which ones can be enacted. So that's okay. Uh, we don't need to enact it immediately. We can just save up a bit more first. Okay. Chasson keeps losing people. I kind of want to attach it. So the people don't die for nothing. It's also quite costly. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Make it a huge city. The hugest of the huge. And we're gonna work this incense, of which we already have a bunch, but you can never have enough incense. So by now this city has grown quite a bit already. And I think I should build an outpost here somewhere. Can we? No. If <laughs> we definitely don't have enough. How much is it? 45. That's nothing. That's good. We will soon be able to afford it. Build some more of those. And then we get the expansion star. Alright, and I think uh, that's enough for today. Maybe next time we can start on the... <sighs> okay, let's finish it up with here. We're gonna go into the next era. Uh, okay, so we can transcend, which I am going to do, but we could also pick a new level uh, civilization from that era in which we just transitioned. So in the classical era, there could be Romans, uh, Achaemenid, Persians, the Maya, the Maurians, the Huns, the Goths, the Celts, the Carthaginians, the Greeks, the Ascumites, or we can transcend. I want to transcend because there is an achievement attached. I only got the <laughs> four stages of ascension yet. I want to try for all of them. But at this point, you could kind of switch around, uh, adapt to the world, maybe pick another one that kind of fits your style already. Like you could go to the Celts to, to go more on the food side already because that's how you have been building up anyway. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to go ahead and transcend which gives you only a plus 10 percent fame gain multiplier which helps with winning because all the fame you get you get plus 10 percent you don't get the cool extras but that's still fine While the Harapans certainly had markets, they left few remains. Please show us what they might have done. I'm trying my best. And you can see how things are kind of upgraded. It's, it's very subtle right now. But we have now a classical look rather than an ancient look to our stuff. So, yeah, with reaching the classical era, I'll leave you at that. And thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy. See you around next time. Until then, bye-bye.